Namaste. For the most part of our practice, we will be exploring extensions. Yeah. Back bends, particularly, well, for me, they are the most powerful in increasing the energy flow through our spine. For once, we're not inherently given the gift of falling backwards. Therefore, when we uh, crack through that weakness, the natural weakness of our physical body, then we open dormant centers, not just in the body, but also in the brain. I suppose, for example, forward bend, we're used to doing that. But when we curl backwards, like you are yeah, attempting yeah, to go past, yeah, at least the normal range of motion of your physical body. And that inherently awakens the brain centers responsible for yeah, doing that purpose. Yeah, so back bends are really important. All right, so we will be exploring back bends from the basic components yeah, all the way to the advanced ones. Yeah, so you can just stop any time you feel the techniques become too intense for you. All right, so starting on the belly, yeah, so if you have that folded blanket ready, you can place that under your chest. You have to cushion your, your spine and then circle those legs around. Good. And then this already yeah, loosens the hips and the joints of the low back and the knees. And you can allow the body to, you know, the legs to sway from hip to hip, yeah, leg to leg, side to side, yeah, and turn the head. Okay, and then you can lift that hip and then lightly allow that foot to touch. And with the blanket supporting your chest, that creates more yeah, space between the body and the floor. Yeah, so you're not bringing the pressure too intensely to your joints. One more per side. Good. And then back to the circular motions. And then side to side. Okay. Now we're utilizing the blanket in opening our shoulders. Okay. Now, let me angle. So your chest is falling on the ground like this. And the shoulder too. Good. And then we're utilizing the space to cushion uh, our bodies so we can yeah, lightly and open without experiencing intense pressure. And then here you can you know, bring the chest lightly away from the shoulders. You can turn and then move the head around in circles. You may adjust the hips a little bit. Good. And then back to the chest. Okay, you can circle a few times before you change. <laughs> I keep coming. All right. And then stretching the other shoulder and flipping. Okay, and back to the chest. All right, then around we go. Yeah, body is open. Shoulder, hips, your legs. Okay, and we're ready to transition. All right. Pressing up to kneeling. All right. You may set this blanket aside. You know, probably will use that for later. All right, and then downward facing dog. We lift the hips. And then let's do a few alternate leg lift. Inhale to lift the leg up. You can lightly move that leg up and down. You can cross it over. And then the other one, now keep practicing, keep alternating those legs. Inhale as you lift the leg up, and exhale as you let the, your leg fall on the ground. Let me just adjust my camera so you can have a closer reference. Anyway, we're not doing no, too many standings, just kneeling probably. Good. Now, next time, you're yeah, just easy, march it in place, like you're pedaling it down with the dog in place. Okay. Beautiful. And then ease. All right. Right knee threads through between the hands. 
and the other leg is open rubbing in out of the head okay now as we inhale lighten this leg as you like you are yeah dragging it forward and then bring that attention into your head flexor inside that hip and lift the spine upwards and then back to the floor let's do that one more time exhale breathing in lighten you can coil into that leg yes so you can really go in and out of your thigh hip and then up oh it feels good this one and then come back all right and then from there both legs in front of us good and then you can move a bit of a sway okay we're reclining yeah on your back up and down you go if you've done a few of my classes all of this uh, very familiar techniques yeah we'll just be focusing on yeah, the preparation and the back bend process all right opening one leg out to the side you can reach that arm over the head well, if this is not accessible you can use a strap or you can just do it free without reaching for the bike otherwise if the openness is there you can rub this leg in and out you can swing the other leg away well, you can rub that hip bone a few times uh, you can kick and stretch and then all right changing okay you can do this first to initiate this one okay and then lifting and stretching preparation for the back bend now we like we want to move yeah the peripheries the extremities yeah, away from the stagnation clogging the spine from moving freely yeah then moving around in circles Man, i feel quite open already uh, change good and then up and down we go if you're not sitting just roll to the side and sit there and then shifting the body yeah from there moving again to the back of the mat we're back you know, inhale alternate exhale down you can lightly angle that hand away yeah the idea is to move the side trunk nice and wide you can even extend the fingertips and one more per side and an easy match in place all right it's the left knee threading across and sitting okay good in and out good as we inhale forward in the mild arch back yeah. not your back bending like you want to go into the inner pockets of your hip right. yeah keep practicing yeah so um, i'll get my spine model so you, you know where we are actually gaining access into okay, in here yeah. the muscles right up here and yeah, that's why you keep coiling in and out and then because when we curl back yeah, the muscles there tend to grip the spine too tight and then by opening those muscles the superficial as well as the deep um, tva yeah and the spine can move one more inhale forward and a mild coiling you might look over that shoulder all right and then sitting yeah. you'll feel like your side body lengthens from within and back to the floor and up it down good and stretching you might rub this leg first. My hair pops and clicks there. Those are your joints readjusting and opening. You can swing it up and across. And then you can even move the step up and down. And change. I approach all my asana from the point of view of openness instead of muscling it i really believe that our bodies once those internal blockages are dissolved then we can just easily open up 
All right, and come back. And then falling from side to side. Right, I'll do the first. Yeah, this is an intermediate back pin. Yeah. Your option is to lift and then just clasp. Yeah. Yeah. And the progression is yeah, placing your hands beside your ears, turning your legs inward, breathing in, and reaching to your yeah, bow pose. And then you're asana. Okay, you may allow the shoulders to readjust. And then breathing here. You may lightly loosen. You feel free to look from shoulder to shoulder. And then stay. Toss and three, two, and one. All right, inhale to press away. And release. And then come back, tucking the head, and then falling gently to your shoulders. Right, and rub around the circles there. Yeah. Sometimes I do that, but not all the time. But I feel like for today, <laughs> I just thought about it while doing the circles. Okay, and then change the other one. All right, and come back, up and down, up and down. Okay, second round. Right. In here, you don't want your knees to fall out to the side. Keep them in so the spine can arch backwards. Good. Exhale, the breath pattern, inhaling. Exhale, loosen, but keep pressing, inhale. And here, you can turn your arm bones externally. So if you notice, my fingers are lightly pointing out to the side. You can free one side a bit. And the other one. That's all. And then just breathe. Inhaling. Exhaling. One more. All right. To come down, inhale. Lightness. Exhale here, inhale tucking, exhale falling, All right, hugging, and circling. After a deep back bend, my contra stretch or my counter stretch is a side bend. So my favorite is this. All right, then change. I could feel my spine is reorganizing itself inside. Feels good. Okay, and then come back. And easy. Do your sitting. And then from the sitting, transitioning to the back, down with up. Okay, and pedal the legs in place. And forward over the hands. Now let's do a, one round of the vinyasa. All right. All right. Kneeling. Oishtrasana. Right. You may rub the shoulders and swing those biceps. Okay. When I do my Oishtrasana, I like to move side to side. Yeah. Rubbing the hip in and out. You can even dance around your upper body yeah body is open therefore when you curl back you're not muscling it hmm? yeah, all right and then breathe yeah, it took me a while to well but still challenging uh, the stage for me to curl back yeah, this deep, but it's never easy. You know? Therefore, when I do my back bend, I make sure I do lots of decompressing and that sequence of flowing and circling. Yeah, one more. 
and for this one, yeah, it's not the Ustrasana, but my preparation already for the full Kapatasana. Now, what I'm trying to do now is I try to press down to the knee, so it becomes like my platform. The more you press down, the more you have the lever yeah, and the support uh, in lifting. You might place your hand here while you're lifting the spine away. Push this down. Mm, you're going to feel there. Mm, you can call from side to side. All right. From there, hang loose. All right. Well, drop behind me. All right. To the floor, you may look over the shoulders to assess how far. And you can walk the knees to the midline. This is important because you don't want your knees too wide. Otherwise, your tail or your low back will contract rather than open. All right, and then come up. Beautiful. All right. Then, now when you come back to your back bend, it feels very clear. Again, we can move in and out. Okay, and then from there, do a standing. Just stand up. Yeah? Good. And then just falling from side to side. You can do this. All right, keep coming. Let me widen my camera again. Okay, now, I've taught you the drill of using a block. All right, you can step on it, and then this becomes your recovery. Okay, you can step a few times, and then swing up and down. Again, we're accessing the spot of your spine, right here. Ida and the pingala, you know, the muscles right up here. Yeah, keep moving, and then changing legs. There's so much to the practical anatomy of the body I'd like to share with you. I am not an expert of the anatomy, but I could feel even here, yeah, even the band connected to this part of the ankle. There are points there which are directly connected to the inside of the hips. And then by pushing the heel to a crooked position, and then lifting the side up, then engaging the tongue inside. You can feel and then gain access to those points. You can also slide that foot down while moving the side up. Mm, feels good. Like you're clearing the blockages. And then back to the kneeling. That's how I practice. Yeah? It's like I'm already always swaying, you know, like a dance-like motion. One leg in front, either the right or the left, doesn't matter. Or you can lift that leg. You remember our lesson about creating space, like the coiling, and then the lifting. And then here, this is the, the body part I mentioned about. Like if you can, you trace <laughs> the the fibers there, and then you move your body away from the floor. Like it's connected to your hip and side. Feel that, yeah? And then the other one. Okay. And I'll try to accomplish Kapotasana. Breathing up. Okay, you can open one arm out of the side. Yeah, so this arm can open away upwards. Yeah, you that how I adjust it? Okay, and do the opposite. And float backwards. You can sway. While you're working through your hip. Okay. Good. When you're ready, come up a bit. So you can do your finer adjustment. 
and releasing those hands, turning the arm bones outwards, and let them fall past the head. All right, first time is always the hardest one. Come up. You're opening those shoulders more, and breathe. All right, in here you can sway, and then adjust. Walk those knees if the mobility is present, but it's not easy doing this. All right, inhaling, and as you exhale, descend on the ground. Breathe. One more. Actually, yeah, come back here. All right, the, the light entry I find is inhale. And while you're clipping that breath, exhale only when your elbows land on the ground. All right, come up and return. Ooh. And move to the midline. You can walk the knees and sway. Okay. Rub around. You notice me working my tongue a lot because I use my tongue to gain access here, here, and all the way down to the hips. <laughs> Don't seek it. And the tongue will manifest when it's time. <sighs> I truly believe <laughs> the mouth being the biggest of the orifices. If you gain access to dials, really pockets, the tongue has a direct connection to those specific points. Good. And do a few of this. If you don't have the block, you can do this. A mouth swing. Good. But I really encourage you to have some elevation because when your limbs are hanging up in the air, you feel this freedom. All right. Ekapada. One leg. Okay. Loosen, reach, coil in and out, like you're turning in and out of the joints of the shoulders and the hips, so the spine can beautifully open away from them. Okay. You may lightly adjust. By lifting the knee to the center and the foot slightly away from the midline. Okay. And then openness and freedom and resting your forearms or your elbows on the floor and breathe. Okay. Inhaling. In and up. Sometimes I press, but I feel like just lifting away from the floor. And then match your knees. All right, and doing Kaputasana right after that. Again, it's, challenge, it's challenging our inherent weakness. As yogis, we need to explore. Well, this is purely optional, actually. It's not, I'm talking about context, not just asana. Exploring things, calculated risk, not being afraid to fail, to commit mistakes and I learn from them. You can loosen a bit, and then come up, and walk. Okay, beautiful. And touch the ground. Good. 
good. Push away. And here I'll try to press up my hands. And, and adjust the knees closer. Rotate the arms a little bit external. So I can rub under the shoulder blades. Oh, and up. Ooh, pure core. And marching in place. Sweet. All right, let's flow. Away from the floor. And behind us. All right, alternate the leg left. Three more. By the way, if any of those techniques become intense, you can always practice Ustrasana over and over again. When I was trying to crack through my back bend, I just do that. Do it again and again and again. Focus on one technique, and then it will lead you to the other ones. And yoga is like that. It's like a progress, or at least asana. You can't just jump from one to the next without becoming good on those previous ones. Because those are like the foundation. Loosen sway, adjust, forward and back, side to side. And reach. If you find yourself like doing those swaying motions, you're actually performing not just asana. Those are guyasanas. They look like asana, or your way to asana may not be as conventional, but not be as common, but deep and profound within. One more breath here. All right, and up. And all the way up. Oh, this part of me is my stronger side. So every time I do my extension here, I feel this sense of profound movement within. Like I, I could feel the linings <laughs> and the creases there. Feels good, actually. Because I'm naturally a rounded person. So back bend <laughs> opens me up. Kaputasana. And then this time I'll try to do it with a passive throat. You may favor one side, so make sure you open the other one too. All right, feels good. No pressure, no pain. Just openness. Yes, it's challenging, but it's motivating challenging, and it's not painful challenging. Because you know, you're improving. All right. I won't press anymore. All right, return. Even if you've done this hundreds or even thousands of times, every time you do it, there's a brand new sensation. It may be as little as a little notch of reaching backwards even more, or probably it's the coming back and you feel different. Yeah, those things. Okay, you can coil. Yeah, finish. And then you can move around that leg. This is my hollow side. Needs more opening. The other one, as well. Alrighty. I'll do another one, Kapatasana. And you can just recover in three-legged dog, or try and join me, why not? Yeah. 
What's another one minute? Yeah. Sometimes you need to loosen your elbows so the spine can move it in. Otherwise, if you keep squeezing, you're trapping your spine, you're clogging the spine, and you're preventing it from moving freely. All right, accomplished. Breathing. Opening. All right, and up we go. You can watch your knees in and up, the upright. Well done, us. Yeah? Easy and so on. Okay, and up to standing, everyone. See it. Marching in place. Yeah, do your leg lift. When you do your back bend, it's similar to like doing weights. Yeah, picture you're doing. Heavy weight, curling the biceps. When you return, you feel your muscles are experiencing that good pump, similarly to back bend. Yeah, you're gonna feel your spine is open and your back is so energized. And then therefore, this one <laughs> makes the body light again. It's like a stretch, yeah? All the back bend is a stretch by itself, but we need this stretch to counter the effect of that. And then by swaying, by falling, kicking, you free the body. Well done, team. Good. So that's a back bend practice. You can just lie down to Shavasana yeah, and do your recovery. You can do a, a, a few twisting and recovery, Matsukridas, and this one. Now let's do this, yeah? One side and circling around. Because I'm continuing on to my hip openers, deep ones. All right, and the other one. Beautiful. All right, back to the center. So we end the way we started. And around we go. Good. All right, thank you for joining me. If you fancy for the next set, next stage, you can continue doing the class. Otherwise, enjoy the rest of yeah, your day, and I'll see you next time. Yeah? Okay.